The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and Buenas noches. It's my pleasure as well. Unfortunately, I forget most of the Spanish that I learned with my Mexican colleagues in Montreal, but we need to work on our languages. And I would add at the beginning, I'm totally supportive of this bill for uh, Latin American Heritage Month, but I think knowing my Latino friends, they'd probably rather do it in July or August, <laughs> given where they come from, but maybe that's negotiable. Um, there are more than 25,000 Latinos in my city of Edmonton, and most in the Latin American community speak a minimum of two languages. So many, of course, speak Spanish, but they also speak Portuguese. But as I will share later, there are other languages that our Latin American friends have brought to Canada. They were attracted to Edmonton in particular for reasons like any other, good schools, economic opportunity, but mostly for freedom. Many came as refugees. As Giuseppe Marconi, the organizer of Carnival Edmonton, explains, trying to describe over 20 Latin American countries where a language is in common sounds easy, but in reality, Everyone is unique, with different cultures, gastronomies, artists, folklore, stories, but we're always looking to overcome the differences. As I said, so how many languages? He says, well, everybody thinks we all speak the Spanish, but if you have Spanish-speaking friends, you know that many of them speak differently. Of course, in parts of Spain, they speak Spanish with a beautiful, beautiful lisp. It's a beautiful language. Edmonton's Latino community is made up of 20 different countries. Some, as I say, speak Spanish, some Portuguese, but many speak indigenous languages, such as Mayan and Arawak languages. Over 2,000 claim Latino heritage in my riding alone of Edmonton Strathcona, and over 4,000 profess being able to speak Spanish or Portuguese in my riding. There are many prominent Latino Edmontonians and Albertans. Three Alberta members of the legislature of our, of our, are of Latin American heritage. Alberta Culture Minister Ricardo Miranda came from Nicaragua. Rod Loyola, who emigrated to Alberta as a child refugee from Chile, and Estefania Cortez Vargas from Colombia. Sandra Azucar, a well-renowned community leader, is Executive Director of Friends of Medicare and a great campaigner on our party's behalf, campaigning for Pharmacare. Ricardo Acuna, a dear friend, Executive Director of the Parkland Institute. He immigrated to Canada as a child with his family as political refugees from the repression in Chile in the 1970s. Ricardo reminds me of the substantial influence that the Chilean community has had in Alberta in both infusing commitment to social democracy and to the union movement. And he reminds me that Ramon Antipan, also a Chilean refugee, was very instrumental in building CAPW. A Peruvian, a rather controversial Latino, Rafi Torres formerly played with the Edmonton Oilers. He's now a retired NHL hockey player. My dear friend Sonia Varela and her daughter Maria, also Chilean refugees, have been stalwart supporters of social democracy, farmer care, Medicare in my province. Cesar Augusto Rondon, president and founder of Multicultural Media and Arts Foundation, which has supported projects including Edmonton Carnival, La Prensa, Directorio Latino d'Alberta. Giuseppe Marconi, who I mentioned earlier, host and creator of Viva the Yeg Latino podcast and Latino Awards Alberta. He organizes Carnival Edmonton, which takes place over three days in the summer in Edmonton Strathcona. He proudly advises this is the largest Latin festival in Canada. So come and check it out. Mexicans. Uh, Carlos Isaias and Bernardo Maldonado are the owners of the famous Argyle's Foods Tienda Latina, offering full range of Latin foods and condiments, also in my beautiful riding of Edmonton Strathcona. Juan Coroca, longtime radio host for Corazon Latino on World FM, also broadcast from Edmonton Strathcona. Sebastian Barrera, community promoter of arts, founder of Cray Art Schools of Arts in Parkdale, Chromedale. It is a free donation-run art school that provides free music lessons and is complete, completed large graffiti and mural art in the Canard Ravine in my city. And my neighbor has hosted a backyard fundraiser for his program. It's really very worthwhile. Many, many cultural organizations and schools, including the Gabriela Mistral Spanish Language School in my riding, 
highly regarded school for teaching Spanish to adults and children, founded as early as 1987. The Edmonton Hispanic Bilingual Association, also in my riding at McKernan School, founded in 1981. The Cultural Associ Association Folklorical Mexico Lindo of Alberta tr teaches traditional Mexican folk dance. The Lasca Latin American Senior Citizen Association of Edmonton and Grupo Primavera are Latin senior citizens groups. La CEN, or the Latin American Community Engagement Network, assists settlement services, English classes, training for recent immigrants. And they have also partnered with the Papaches First Nation to honor indigenous culture. The Venezolanos on Edmonton are a Venezuelan group that get together. Acapelca, a Peruvian Canadian cultural association, also in my riding. There is the Chilean Community Society. And then there is also the Latin American Students Association at my alma mater, the University of Alberta. Across my riding and across the city, but I'm particularly proud in my riding of Edmonton Strathcona, many fabulous Latino restaurants. Uma, El Cortez, Mucho Burrito, a Vida Arepa, which is a Venezuelan restaurant, Julio's Barrio, Burrito Libra, and Tacos on White. All places for everybody to get together when you come to visit beautiful Edmonton Strathcona. Uh, in closing, Mr. Speaker, I would like to share that for four years I had the opportunity to work with Mexican colleagues in Montreal at the uh, North American Commission for Environmental Cooperation. And at every opportunity, and I mean every opportunity, every child's birthday, every spouse's birthday, every celebration like the Cinco de Mayo or the Day of the Dead or the Day of the Dead plus Halloween, we would have celebrations and there would be a lot of salsa, a lot of samba, a lot of merengue, a lot of music and of course a lot of tequila. So I have been very privileged to spend a lot of time with Latino colleagues, with Latino friends in Edmonton and I think indeed if ever there was a culture in our country that merited a celebration and I still think that we might want to negotiate on the month because many of these festivals are outside. I know that in the Heritage Des uh, Days Festival in Edmonton, which is mammoth and goes on over three days, that you will find a lot of the culture of the Latino community. So, buenas noches again and enjoy the rest of the evening celebrating the Latino culture. <laughs>